During this presentation, we're going to talk about the workup of a thyroid nodule. Let's first start out with the case. So you have a patient, 49-year-old female, referred to your office by her primary care physician because of a newly noticed right thyroid nodule. No pertinent past medical or surgical history, not taking any medications. Now before you walk into the office, you should really start thinking about the di differential diagnosis of a thyroid nodule. Now what would be on your differential? Well first, toxic adenoma. Next, toxic multinodular goiter. And finally, the one that we're most concerned about with is thyroid cancer. Luckily, thyroid cancer is only present in the general population 4 to 6.5 percent of the time. Now with this in mind, you walk into the, your office with your goal being to try to differentiate between these three possible options. Of note, there are other possible causes for a thyroid nodule, but really these are the most common three. Now let's start with the HPI. The HPI will not give you a definitive diagnosis in this situation, but it will help to separate out some of the causes of, of a thyroid nodule on your differential diagnosis. Most important risk factor for thyroid cancer is a history of radiation exposure to the neck. We also want to ask whether the patient has a history of dysphagia or a hoarse voice and might consider cancer higher on our list if the patient is at extremes of age, so less than 30, older than 60, or is a male gender. While you might see more females with thyroid cancer, if you're a male presenting with a thyroid nodule, you are at higher risk for that nodule actually being cancerous. Next is the family history. Interestingly, most thyroid cancers do not run in families, except for medullary thyroid cancer, which you might see in the men 1 and 2 syndromes. And someone who has a history of thyroid, family history of thyroid disease, you would actually most likely see that if it was a history of toxic multinodular goiter. Let's say our patient denies previous infection, no hoarse voice, no dysphagia, no history of thyroid problems in the family. Now, physical, physical exam alone will not allow you to definitively rule in or out any diagnoses as well, but we still might look for some important aspects of this nodule, which include the size of the mass, number of nodules, multiple nodules, more likely TMG, tenderness, which might indicate thyroiditis, lymph node involvement, or a fixed versus a movable mass, with a fixed mass being more likely cancerous, movable mass possibly cystic. Now from the history and physical, we've gathered some information about this patient. Now what would be our next most important step? This is a pretty critical point. It's the next step is TSH levels, very commonly asked on board exams and other shelf exams. So low TSH levels are more indicative of th hyperthyroidism or a hyper functioning nodule, such as in TMG or toxic adenoma, in which the next case or next step would be a thyroid scintigraphy. While a normal or high TSH might make us more concerned with cancer, which means we're going to be doing an ultrasound plus or minus fine needle aspiration. So let's say in this case our patient had a low TSH. So our next step is a thyroid scintigraphy. What this is, is it basically allows us to determine the functional status of the nodule. You have a patient swallow 100 to 200 microcuries of radioactive iodine and you have a counter which is used to determine the uptake of different thyroid tissues of the iodine. Now from this scan there are three main outcomes, cold, indeterminate, or hot nodule. The non-functioning and the cold nodules require further workup with fine needle aspiration as they're more likely to be cancerous. Hot nodules are less likely and do not require further evaluation by fine needle aspiration. 
Now the last step, as we previously mentioned, is an ultrasound with a fine needle aspiration. So again, let's say our patient low TSH level, we did a scintigraphy scan, except on the scan, he had, the nodule was actually cold. So this ultrasound technique is really used for a patient like ours with a cold nodule or again with indeterminate nodules. Or as we mentioned earlier, people with normal or high TSH levels. Now ultrasound alone cannot predict whether the nodule is cancerous, which is why we use fine needle aspiration to look at the cells and determine whether or not it's correlated with cancerous cells. Of note, ultrasound is really for solid versus cystic determination. Now from this fine needle aspiration, there are a few possible outcomes. First, you can have malignant. Second, it can be benign. Third, suspicious. And last, indeterminate. Now really, the only one that requires no further intervention is the benign ones, as the last three do have a chance of cancer and would require either further surgical intervention or follow-up. Finally, the take-home points. Differential diagnosis of a thyroid mass includes cancer toxic adenoma, or TMG. Big risk factor for thyroid cancer is radiation to the neck. And TSH followed by scintigraphy or ultrasound with FNA is the first step in workup after a person comes in with a thyroid nodule. Thank you.